Hello, and thank you so much for listening. Today we are continuing with the book of Psalm, and we're going over to Psalm 5. The lies of enemies, God is able to defend us from lies spoken against us. There's some folks telling some lies on some people. Some lies, lots of them. I'm telling you that in my Life Application Bible, there is a commentary that backs up Psalm 5, 1 through 3. And I'm going to read that and then also give you some of the commentary that's in the Bible. Psalm 5, the last of enemies, God is able to defend us from last spoken against us. Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my sighing. Listen to my cry for help. My king and my God, for to you I pray. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait in expectation. Okay. Now, if you want the full length of uh, this um, psalm, right, um, I suggest that you pause it and read all the way through it because I'm going to do some skipping around. Okay. Uh, now, the commentary that goes along with this says this, the secret of a close relationship with God is to pray to him earnestly each morning. In the morning, our minds are more free from problems and then we can commit the whole day to God. Regular communication helps in f any friendship. Okay. Regular communication helps any friendship. Uh oh, somebody needs to hear that because that's why your friends are kind of acting weird or they're talking about you or they're not really, you know, all into you like that because there is no regular communication. OK, so regular communication helps any friendship and is certainly necessary for a strong relationship with God. OK, so if I'm not regularly communicating with him, he's not a part of my day and all that other stuff, I'm just going about doing whatever then. Of course, I'm not going to be close to him. There's no sense in hating on others who's close to him because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. All right. So you're supposed to get right with God. Draw near to him. He'll draw near to you. Now, we need to communicate with him daily. That means that you wake up in the morning time and you say, Lord, I, I just pray I have a nice day. I pray I have a good day. Okay, you communicate it. Okay, then you go over and you're brushing your teeth or whatever. And a thought comes to mind and you say, Lord, please help me. I did not want to think that negative thought just now about that person. OK, boom. That's another communication. Then you're going and you're walking down the street and suddenly let's say that you trip. OK, but you don't fall. But you say, oh, thank you, Jesus, that I didn't hit my head or, you know, bruise my toe um, or anything like that. You know, um, so thank you, Jesus. OK, boom. You see how the communication is incorporated into your daily life. It's not in the way that some folks try to bind you in a situation where it's all about Jesus sitting in a room, you know, for three or four or five hours. OK, some situations do happen like that. I know it happens with me sometimes because God has a lot to say. But most of the time, it's communication going on throughout the day. You're saying something to God. God saying something to you. Sometimes God is saying something to you. And sometimes you got to be quiet because, you know, you mess up. So you confess sin and you repent. OK, so then um, the, the application asks you this question. The Life Application Bible asks you this question. Do you have a regular time to pray and read God's word? Do you? Do you have a regular time to pray and read God's word? OK, now let's say that you are that one that's going through much with these lies. People keep to lying on you coming up with stuff. OK. And you're sick of it and you're contemplating all sorts of stuff. You know what? You want to go and you want to tell people these lies about me. Mm hmm. I got something for you. Right. That's what the flesh says. I got something for you. And the Lord says, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know you want to handle it. In a way that's ungodly. But just give me a chance. Give me a chance. I got this. I created that person. I know their weakness. Oh, you do. Mm -hmm. put, them in, put them in my hands. Let me deal with them. All right. And so that's what we're supposed to do. But folks don't normally do that, especially those that are about the flesh. They're going to try to do things in their own strength. And that's where 
we have to ask the Lord to deal with them. They're trying to get me by coming over here and starting some drama, Lord. So I ask that you reverse every curse. I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you just protect me from all harm and danger and keep me, Lord Jesus, close. I ask that no weapon formed against me will prosper, Lord Jesus. I pray that whatever they found on me or what have you, that somehow, some way, Lord, that it will not stick. I pray in Jesus' name that you will not call their memory to anything that I've done so that they can wipe my face with it. In the name of Jesus. Come on, some of you all. Pray those kind of prayers right now. These people are lying on you. They're talking crazy about you. Or maybe there's somebody that's, that you don't even know is lying on you. But sooner or later, you're going to find out that they are lying on you. Okay? Telling all sorts of stuff. So, God doesn't take any type of pleasure in this sort of behavior. As you will read in Psalm 5. And he will remind you that these people are bloodthirsty. They're deceitful. And he basically hates them you know abhors their deeds i should say um and uh let's see there's not a word from their mouth in verse nine there's not a word from their mouth uh can be trusted their heart is filled with destruction their throat is an open grave with their tongue they speak deceit verse 10 declare them guilty O god let their intrigues be their downfall banish them for their many sins for they have rebelled against you okay read 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 i'm telling you um this is the sort of thing that we want to put in the hands of god those of you all that keep thinking that you can come up with your own plans that's why they backfire because you're not you're not utilizing what god has given you when you accepted jesus as your personal lord and savior there was more to that than just walking down the aisle or putting your hands up somewhere okay you were supposed to have this regular communication with him you were supposed to be praying you were supposed to be doing a lot of stuff and this is why you don't see the kind of results because you don't have that type of relationship with him. That's like going to somebody's mother and saying, can you hook me up with about $5,000? And she's looking at you like, do I know you? Do I know you? I wouldn't even give my kids $5,000. So wh who are you? And so God is, is sitting there saying, okay, you coming to me telling me about all these people that's doing all this wrong to you. But how much communicating are you doing with me? Okay, let's go over to verse or Psalm 11, okay, which isn't too far away. We're going to go to Psalm 11. Once again, David is talking um, according to the uh, Life Application Bible. The theme for this particular psalm is God's rule provides stability in the midst of panic because we can trust him. We can face our problems. So you find out something and it just, oh, I mean, it's the type of thing that's creating panic. I know someone who right now she's going through some things and it's creating panic. The panic comes and it goes and it comes and it goes. Um, once again, I have to take you to the scriptures if you're a believer, because this is where it's at. OK, in the spiritual realm, we need to activate some things. But the Holy Bible, the things that God leads us to, there are certain uh, words that he will lead us to to activate things in the spiritual realm that we cannot always pray okay we cannot always find the words to say so this is why the scriptures come in handy if you're going to go if you're going to go deep into this whole personal relationship with god it would make sense to study the bible like you study a scientific book like you uh do when you study in some lottery numbers uh-huh some of you all who play that god has moved on your spirit not to play but you continue to do it in the hopes of winning the big one and then when bills are not paid and you fall behind then, you know, with uh, with uh, your debt and so forth, then you're up there talking about, ah, oh, I can't believe this, Lord, you know, and then you're in the prayer circle at the church hoping that you're going to get some kind of blessings. And the Lord is saying, no, you just stop playing all these different numbers or you stop going over here, you know, and spending up this money on these people and you know you don't have it. Okay, so. In the Lord I take refuge. How then can you say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. Verse 3, when the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? What can they do? Right? What can they do? Well, verse 4, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes the sons of men. His eyes examine them. Verse 5, the Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked and those who love violence his soul hates. 
Verse 6, on the wicked he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur. Did you hear that? On the wicked he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur. And you're sitting up there panic and worried and stressed about some lies. The wicked he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur. A scorching wind will be their lot. Verse 7, for the Lord is righteous, he loves justice. Upright men will see his face. The Lord is righteous, he loves justice. Upright men will see his face. Okay? Upright men, not wicked men, not that man who claims that you don't know Jesus, but I do, right? Not that woman who says, hmm, I don't believe in all that, all that that you're talking about, but I believe in God, right? But she don't want to do what's right. It's upright men who will see his face. Are you upright today? I pray that you are in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that you are or that you're getting there or that you want to do what is right. Okay? <sighs> Lord Jesus. David, give you a little history. David was forced to flee for safety several times. And you see that in the scriptures, verses 1 through 4 of Psalm 11. Being God's anointed king did not make him immune to injustice and hatred from others. OK, so people still hating on him. This psalm may have been written when he was being hunted by Saul. OK, in both instances, David fled, but not as if all was lost. He knew God was in control while David wisely avoided trouble. He did not fearfully run away from his troubles. David seems to be speaking to those who are advising him to run from his enemies. David's faith contrasted dramatically with the fear of the advisors who tell him to flee. Faith in God keeps us from losing hope and helps us resist fear. David's advisors were afraid because they saw only frightening circumstances and crumbling foundations. David was comforted and optimistic because he knew God was greater than anything his enemies could bring against him. Did you hear that? David was comforted. He wasn't panicking. He wasn't panicking when he knew that God got his back. Why would you panic? If you trust in God like you claim you trust in God, why are you running around here talking about, I don't know. I mean, I can't believe this and these people and oh my gosh, the lies. Trust in God. My God is going to go into an establishment right now in the name of Jesus, and he's going to flip some things upside down. My God is going to go and talk with some folks and cause some things to take place where the lies are going to have to stop. My God is going to remove some people so that they don't have to keep talking about this thing and that thing that is not getting done. My God is a righteous God, a loving God, a wonderful God. And he's not going to come in the way that the enemy thinks. He's not going to come in the way that some people places and stuff out there tend to communicate. He is unique. He is strange. He is strong. He is mighty. The God that I serve, I have seen so much. And I continue to see how he does things in my life and in other people's lives that will make some folks creeped out, some folks run, some folks scared, some folks rejoicing, some folks talking about, can I get that too? And some folks even wanting to offer some money for what we know. I thank you for taking this time out of your busy schedule to listen. Please do check the description box for anything related to your situation. And as always, to God be the glory.